West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. One of the most famous of them all was Black Bart. Working alone and on foot, he held up 27 coaches and for nine long years in the 1880s baffled the smartest detectives in California. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective assigned to the Black Bart case. His repeated stage holdups had cost the railroads and Wells Fargo thousands of dollars. The sheriff in this one horse town had captured a man and claimed he was a notorious Black Bart. Hello, Matt. Howdy, Sheriff. Looks like you made the papers. I'm swearing to you, I'm not Black Bart. Sure, the sheriff caught me sticking up a stagecoach, but I'm not guilty of all these other robberies. I suppose you deny you didn't have this over your head when I caught you. Well, there's no denying that this is a trademark of Black Bart. But I got good reason to believe this man's telling the truth. Black Bart's always worked alone. When you picked up this man, he had a gang with him. And another thing, he used a pistol instead of a sawed-off shotgun. If you want more proof, why don't you talk to that Wells Fargo detective from San Francisco named Harris? Bob Harris? That's right. Got in town this morning. Just left here after having a talk with Black Bart. Where's he stopping? Over the hotel. Please believe me. I'm not guilty of these holdups. I don't think you are either. Matt. Bob, you old son of a Good gun. Good to see you. you. Thought you'd be around when you heard I was in town. Yeah, the sheriff said you'd pay a little visit over to his office. The man he's holding there is not Black Bart. Did you tell him that? I told him I couldn't swear he was a man. Come on, sit down. Look, Bob, there's no detective on the West Coast that knows more about Black Bart than you do. You could have convinced him of that. Why didn't you? Take advantage of all the free publicity, that's why. As soon as Black Bart reads those headlines, he'll want to pull another job, just to show us how wrong we are. What do you expect him to do, send you a timetable? The next best thing. Maybe we can send him one. Yeah? I'm listening. Bart's pulled 26 robberies so far, most of them between Wairika and Sonora. You think he'll take that route again? He might, if we make the payload attractive enough. There's only one hitch tonight, Bob. If he sees mugs like yours and mine riding the coach, he'll never step out of the bushes. Uh, you got me there. Did you ever think of using a woman? Never have. What could a woman do? She wouldn't arouse suspicion, and I've got just a girl. Trained head and a cool observer. If we let her ride the coaches with a big payload of marked money and gold, and if we just happen not to be too far away at any given time. Sounds good. Send for her. You stick right here. I'll back. Mrs. Stritch has coffee and beans inside the station, folks. We'll be here about half an hour. Thank you, Mr. Bold. Pleasure. My partner, Frank Adams, had been waiting in San Francisco, ready, willing, and able. Now I was meeting her on her first day out. Care to join me for some nice cold lemonade, Miss Adams? Oh, no, thank you. I think I'll stretch a bit. As you wish, my dear. Stick him up, Mr. McGardle. Don't turn around. I'm Black Bart. Don't ever do that. Oh, please don't shoot me, Black Bart. I'm just a hard-working stage driver with a family to support. I'll give you anything I got. You better. And be quick about it. I got it up there in the booth. Just give me a second and I'll get it for you. Uh, is this what you want, Black Bart? Well, what's the matter, Todd? Don't you like it? You mean it, it really is for me? Yeah, for your birthday. Gee, a real gun. Do you think it'll be all right with Ma? Oh, sure, I fixed it before I bought it. I told her you're old enough now to start doing the family hunting. Thanks, Mr. McGardle. First rabbit I shoot, I have Ma fix it up for you. Just wait till I show her. 
Thank you. Yeah, I did. Oh, excuse me, mister. Hey, Miss McGonagall! You sure this boy is old enough to own a rifle? He's 13. I had a gun when I was 10. If you're old enough to own a real rifle, my boy, you're old enough to stop playing robbers. I'm surprised at you giving this boy a weapon without proper instructions to go with it. Don't you know you never point a gun at anybody unless you want to kill them? After all, sir, I just gave it to him. I intend to straighten him out. Anyway, it ain't loaded. But empty or loaded, you always carry a gun like this. If it should be accidentally discharged, the bullet will go into the ground. Here, let's see old. Golly, mister. You should know a lot about guns, don't you? I don't think we ought to bother the gent anymore, Todd. I'll come back tonight and teach you how to shoot it. Now run along and show your mommy a new present. I'm ready to leave. I'll... Good lemonade, wasn't it? Lovely. How was the ride? Rough. I'll never believe those travel posters again. Those seats are not padded. How long will I be riding this chariot back and forth? Two weeks. Oh, no. Believe me, it hurts me more than it does you. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, of all the nerve. Didn't Harris say anything to you about carrying firearms? Yeah, I know. A couple of fine gentlemen you are send a poor defenseless woman out after Black Art. 26 holdups and no kill yet. If you start peppering away at him with this, he'll blast you sure with that shotgun of his. Who is that old dude? He's an old mining engineer by the name of C.E. Bold. Believe me, if you were just half the gentleman he is. Oh, here he comes. Come, my dear, I'm afraid Mr. McArdle is in no mood to wait for us. the way it was going to be for almost two weeks. Frankie riding the stage at back and forth with the payroll from the mines. But nothing happened. So on the next Thursday, we made arrangements for a big payload of mark money to go through. We made sure the news of the shipment got around. It was a Thursday, the 4th of November, 1883. I rode a trail that paralleled the main stage road, expecting to make a check with Frankie at the Clear Springs way station. You scared me. I think it was a bear. It could have been. There's lots of them around here. <laughs> Didn't expect to run into you way up here. Me neither. I learned to use that gun just like you said. I've been careful not to point it at anybody. And I've been carrying it just like this. That's the way to do it. Practice what you're taught and you'll have things in this world that can't be bought. Hurt yourself? Yeah. I broke my shin. I've got just the thing here. For all minor cuts, abrasions, poison oak and ivy, not to mention the seven-day itch. Will it sting? No, not a bit. Yeah, you hold it there and you'll be as good as new in a couple of minutes. Thanks. Say, what are you doing way out here in the country? You lost? No. Prospective. Gee, sure don't look like it. All dressed up like that. Time you get as old as me, you'll learn people never really look like what they are. Fact is, I'm a gentleman prospector. Better known as a mining engineer. How's hunting? Not so good. But maybe I'll get a rabbit on my way home. That's the spirit. Never give up. Well, I better be moseying along. Good luck, Sonny. Good luck to you, sir. Oh, I you find a lot of gold. I usually do, young man. I usually do.
up there, driver. Throw down your gun. Now the box. My can is tied off in the back boot. Set the brake and tie off the rein. All right, Newt. Keep your purse. It's not my habit to rob or hurt the ladies. Take that rock and put it under the back wheel. Go on. All right, driver, get down. Now get the box. Help him, miss. Go on. Sit it over here. All right, driver, back in the seat. In the coach, miss. Give me that gun. What's wrong? Hold up, Black Bart. You stay here. You ain't coming. I would miss this for anything. Golly, can that lady shoot? I winged him, Matt. I saw him grab his arm. He just went over the hill there a second ago. Horse back? No, a foot. He probably has a horse hidden on the other side. You get back to town, scare up a posse. Be careful, he's got a shotgun. Help. to high ground where I could see the country for miles. I was looking for a man on horseback, and that's where I made my mistake. I never figured a man would work entirely on foot without a horse hidden somewhere for a getaway. Didn't have any luck, Frankie. Todd and I searched every inch of ground. We found clues strewn halfway down the canyon. He was carrying that valise and that axe. He says he's sure he met Black Bart just before the robbery. You think you could identify him if you saw him again, Todd? Oh, sure. He was the same man who was at the way station when I got my gun. That mining engineer that called himself C.E. Bold? He even helped bandage up my leg. That's his own handkerchief. He tied it on himself. Say, Todd, you think I could uh, borrow that handkerchief for a while? Oh, sure. It stopped bleeding by now. Okay. Will that give us anything? Yeah, it might, once we get to San Francisco and see Bob Harris at the Wells Fargo office. Oh, this he left on purpose. This makes me sure it's Bart. He's left poetry in the strong box before. I've labored long and hard for bread, for money and large sums, but on my corns too long you've tread. Too bad he didn't finish it. That could be argued a half a dozen different ways. Frankie didn't give me much of a chance to. I wonder what that last line is. Now we'll have to capture him to find out. 
As long as we can't find a man by the name of C.E. Bowles, I've got a hunch that this is our strongest clue. What do you think of that mark in the corner of the handkerchief? Chinese character. I'd say it's a laundry mark. Must be a thousand laundries in California. I don't think we'll have to take in all of California. The marked money Bart took from the strong box has been turning up here in San Francisco. There's a possibility that Bart lives right here in the city between robberies. That'll be a good job for you, Frankie. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> well, come on, let's go. For the next three days, Frankie tramped up and down the hills of Chinatown, calling on one laundry right after another. It began to look like this would go on for weeks, that we'd have to start working on laundries outside of Chinatown when... Hello, Missy. You got laundry ticket? Is this mark yours? Oh, yes, Missy. This mark mine. Who does it belong to? One moment, please. I tell you, uh, it belong to Mr. C.E. Bolton. C.E. Bolton. You know something, Mr. Chang? You very nice man. Me too? Sure thing, you bet. Okay, goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye -bye. As soon as Frankie passed the word, I began my daily watch of Chang's California laundry. On the third day, a man answering the description of Black Bart entered the laundry. Well, there it is. Very good. One moment, please, I get for you. <laughs> Beg your pardon, sir. Are you Mr. C.E. Bolton? Yes, I am. I'm Matt Clark, railroad detective. Indeed. I wonder if you'd come along with me, Mr. Bolton. We'd like to question you down at the Wells Fargo office. Well, I'm a mining engineer, you know. Would this have something to do with my latest shipment of gold? Yeah, I'm afraid so, but I doubt if it was your gold. Huh? This is all very highly irregular, of course. However, I should be delighted to go along with you. Chang, this man's trying to rob me. Stop it! Sir, I'll be forced to shoot. Now, let's get out of here as fast as possible. Chang wasn't a criminal. He was just helping out a friend. But it sure was mighty inconvenient at the time. turned into town and tried to get away on foot, he might have made it. As it was, he headed for open country. I guess he didn't figure on me having a horse close by.
Black Bart wasn't dead. He wasn't even injured. It'd take a lot more than a wagon accident to hurt a tough robber like him. Come on, Bart, admit it and get it over with. When I shot at Black Bart after the robbery, he grabbed his left arm. Would you mind rolling up your sleeve, please? Not at all, not at all. I told the laundry man to have that button See fixed. It. How did you get that? I scratched it on the nail. Pardon me. Would you mind repeating after me? Throw down that box. Throw down that box. Come on in, Mac. The voice you just heard, Mac, who said it? I just heard the voice of Black Bart, Mr. Clark. It was the last man who said, throw down the box. That's all, Mac, thanks. Dodge, you said you'd talk to a man about 30 minutes before the robbery. He said he was carrying an axe and a shotgun. Is that man in this room? That's the man, sir. Gee, I'm sorry, mister. After you were so nice to me and everything. Fixing my leg with your handkerchief. I'm sorry, too. That's all right, my boy. You're only doing your duty. And I suppose I might as well do mine. You can tell all your grandchildren that the man who taught you how to handle a gun was Black Bart. Black Bart? Gee, Willikins. That's all, Todd. Thanks a lot. Before we go on to the confession, Mr. Bolton, there's one thing I'm curious about. Why? It's very simple, sir. I wanted to be a gentleman. After serving honorably in the Civil War, I came west to make my fortune. It wasn't as easy as I thought, so I took what gold I needed. Does your family know anything about this? Indeed not. Except for the robbing of the stagecoaches, I am perfectly respectable. I don't swear, smoke, or drink hard liquor, except for medicinal purposes. I'd never think of harming a living creature. But you always carried a shotgun. Don't tell me you wouldn't have used it. Hardly. The shotgun was never loaded. But the man in the wagon. My hand. He's right. He didn't have a gun. I believe you're somewhat of a poet, sir. A mere dilettante, miss. We found this fragment of a poem long box. Would you mind finishing it for us? Not at all. Not at all. See, I have labored long and hard for bread for money in large sums. But on my corns too long you've tread. You fine-haired sons of guns. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good, wasn't it? <laughs> Black Bart was brought to trial on November the 17th, 1883, just 14 days after the robbery. Whereas the said C.E. Bolton is convicted of robbery by his own admission, he is therefore ordered, adjudged, and sentenced to San Quentin, the state prison for the period of seven years. Take him away. Too bad he didn't stick to writing poetry instead of robbery, eh, Judge? It's all according to taste, Mr. Clark. Frankly, had he been accused of writing verse instead of robbing coaches, I'm afraid I might have had to give him life. 